Hello everyone, it's the Whiskey Guru here. In today's video, we're going to go over different types of whiskey, whiskey ingredients, and whiskey terminology. My goal here with this video is to hopefully you found one that you really, really enjoy. To use these terms and these ingredients to find others that are similar and get you drinking more whiskey. That's our goal here, right? So we, we're here to broaden your horizons and get you interested in tasting more. So let's jump right into it. Let's start with the ingredients. The four main ingredients of whiskeys around the world predominantly are corn, rye, wheat, and barley, which is most of the time malted. Now this is important because most classifications of whiskey have one predominant grain. They're going to have one unique predominant grain that it has to be at least 51% most of the time. And they're going to use a combination of the other three and they're going to call them flavor grains. Uh, they're going to use these to make their bottle and their batch unique from other distillers, hopefully. Uh, they're also called the mash bill, but these other three are used in different percentage and different combinations in order to make them unique. So this is important. So let's start with bourbon. In order to be classified as a bourbon, you need to be 51% corn, right? There's other designations as well, but we're not going to get into those because we're just here about flavor today. Uh, but it's important, right? So all bourbons have to be at least 51% corn. Now the next two are a little bit easy and they're pretty self-explanatory. Rye has to be 51% rye. A weeded has to be 51% weeded. And... The other one that's unique is scotch. Now, in order to be a scotch, you have to be 51% malted barley. Uh, scotch is unique. It has very in-depth profiles. Not that the others don't, but uh, there's a lot of scotch guys that just like scotch. There's a lot of us that like all of the things, uh, but there's a lot of scotch people who just like scotch. And this is cool and good to know because there are some amazing single malted whiskeys from all over the world. Japan makes some amazing ones. America makes some amazing ones. So if you're a Scotch guy and you haven't tried some of these single malted whiskeys from Japan and the U.S. and other parts of the world, I suggest you do because you're going to find some other ones that you really, really enjoy that you might not have thought. Uh, let's go into some other terms. Some other terms you need to know. One of them is very, very important and unique. It's called small batch. Now I say this because... There's no designation or rule on what small batch is. I've seen many of small batch that are actually mass produced, which is, should be a contradiction in terms, but it isn't. There's nothing that defines it. Now, most of the small batches are actually small batches, and they're unique. It means they're smaller run. Uh, they're going to put more time into the process instead of just a mass produced thing. But there's no one saying they have to. So just be cognizant of that fact. Uh, now, you're, another term you're going to see is single barrel. Now, this is important to know. Single barrels are typically more expensive because it's a more unique, smaller process, right? Uh, what's also interesting to know is the taste is going to vary from barrel to barrel. And this is going to be determined by how what the weather was, where it was stored, how it was stored, when it was bottled, what time of the year. So you might try one single barrel from a distillery and find out you really, really enjoy it. And then you try another single barrel from that same distillery, but it's a different batch. And you're like, eh, it's just not, I don't like it as much. And that's common. Uh, but single barrels are typically very, very good. They usually hand pick them because they're good. Uh, just know that the, the taste varies. Now, there's three other terms that all go together that you really, really need to know. Uh, there's foolproof barrel proof, and cast strength. These are very, very important, right? So all of these things mean that they are the exact alcohol percentage that it comes out of the barrel. Now, what's good to know is most whiskey, when it comes out of the barrel, averages between 120 and 160 proof. That's the way the distiller made it. That's how it comes out of the barrel. In order to get it down to any of the lower percentages or proofs, they actually have to dilute it with water. So this is important because you're going to get a cast strength, you're going to get a barrel proof, and it's going to run a lot hotter because of the alcohol percentage than a normal lower whiskey. This is also a great benefit, though, uh, because you're chasing the juice exactly how the distiller intended it. There's no water diluting it. There's no changing it. It's the exact flavor profile of how it was intended to be done. Now... If you're a beginner, 
Keep in mind, you might not be able to drink these neat right away. In fact, I almost guarantee you won't. It takes a lot of uh, practice and drinking in order to be able to drink a barrel proof neat. So I suggest starting off with an ice circle. Starting that way is to cool it down a little bit, dilute it, get used to it, get used to the flavor profiles and the heat and the taste, and then gradually uh, taking it away. Because if you can drink a cast strength or a barrel proof neat, there's nothing better, man. There is nothing better in the world. So that's it as far as terms and uh, what we're going over today. I am going to start something new. I'm going to start focusing on a new distillery that is uh, maybe one that's not common or mass produced. Uh, I live in Austin, so I'm going to choose one in Austin. This is still Austin. It's called The Musician. It's about 98 proof. The flavor notes in here for me are going to be cinnamon. They're going to be some pineapple fruit notes. They're also going to be uh, caramel and vanilla. It is spectacular. This one runs for about 40 bucks. If you see this, please don't leave it on the shelf. Buy it. It is spectacular. In fact, I'm drinking it right now. So let's go out there and drink some more whiskey. And remember, no matter what anyone tells you in life, you are strong like bull. Cheers.